Hello, everyone. Today, I am here with Dr. Alexis Pasolka. How's it going today, Dr. Pasolka? Fine, thank you. How are you? I'm great. Do you mind telling me a little bit about the Harmful Algal Bloom Monitoring Program here? Oh, sure. So here at the Cal Poly Pier, which you can see in the image behind me, um, we have a Harmful Algal mon Monitoring Bloom Program. So harmful algal blooms, or what we call HABs, are when phytoplankton, the tiny microscopic plant-like organisms in the ocean, grow in really high numbers, and some of the species can be harmful to other marine organisms and humans. They're either harmful because they produce toxins, or because when they bloom in really, really high numbers, they provide a food source for other microorganisms, such as bacteria. And when those bacteria enjoy the phytoplankton feast, they respire, drawing down oxygen, and those low oxygen waters can be detrimental. And so as part of this program, we monitor our local waters for the presence of the, these species that are known to be harmful algal bloom formers and aim to provide real-time information on coastal health and safety. Our monitoring station here at Cal Poly is part of a larger national effort, effort to provide scientific data and information to address coastal issues. The national program is called the Integrated Ocean Observing System, or IUS, of which there are 11 regional programs. And here in California, we have two of those programs, one of which is the Southern California Coastal Ocean Observing System, or SCUS, and the Central and Northern California Coastal Ocean Observing System, or CENCUS. And these are collaborative networks of scientists and research teams, such as ours here at Cal Poly, with the goal of providing scientific information to address coastal issues such as HAPS. What is the involvement of Cal Poly undergrad students specifically? Oh, absolutely. So here at Cal Poly, our undergraduate students are actually our field samplers and those who ID identify the phytoplankton. So our students go weekly to the Cal Poly Pier and collect seawater samples and then learn how to quantify and identify phytoplankton under the microscope. So I would say it takes about three to six months for training to learn how to identify phytoplankton, but then they become experts on our local flora. Um, in addition, these data sets provide a great opportunity for, phyto, for our students to explore phytoplankton data. So long-term data sets such as the one generated through this program, we've been sampling since about 2008, provide an opportunity to look at how our coastal ecosystems are changing. Um, and so these changes, of course, have implications for other organisms in the ocean, like invertebrates, oysters and clams, fish and marine mammals, because phytoplankton are the base of the food web. So they're really powerful data sets and an opportunity for many students to get involved in understanding our coastal ecosystems. Wonderful. And it's my understanding that Cal Poly just received a five-year grant. Do you have any more information on that? Yes, yeah, so these programs are funded through NOAA, in part by NOAA and in part by different local and state agencies. And they're five-year awards, and we recently received funding to continue this program for another five years. And so we're excited about the opportunity to continue to contribute to an understanding of our coastal ecosystems. That is so exciting. So if we're interested, where can we go to find more information? I'm sure. So both SCUS and SENCUS have websites. So if you look up the Harmful Algal Bloom Monitoring Alert Program or HABMAP, you can learn more about not just the Cal Poly site, but the um, sites statewide that do this harmful algal bloom monitoring. And actually on the page, there's a resource where you can plot our data real time. So if you're interested in which phytoplankton are blooming in the waters, you can observe those data on the website. Wonderful, that's all very interesting and that's exciting work you're doing at the Cal Poly Pier. Thanks for joining Thank me today, you. Dr. Pasolka. Thank you very much. I hope everyone has a great rest of their day.